This is THAAD, a highly advanced missile defense system that essentially turns Iran's missiles into little more than glorified pea shooters. Thanks to this ultra-secret weapon system recently deployed by the United States to Israel, the United States ensures its ability to intercept nearly anything Iran attempts to launch. But there's more to the story. Alongside Thawad, the United States has deployed a comprehensive array of its own air defense systems in Israel. This development comes after the U.S. Department of Defense confirmed in mid-October that Thaad would be sent to Israel in response to Iran's unprecedented attack on October 1st. Thaad is one of the most advanced air defense weapons in the U.S. military arsenal. Its presence in Israel marks a significant shift in the conflict. But what exactly is Thaad? And why does it matter so much? Thaad, or Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, entered service in the late 1990s. It's a mobile system designed to shoot down the most advanced ballistic missiles in the world. It's incredibly expensive. Each battery costs around $1 billion, and each missile costs $15 million per shot. This high price tag stems from the cutting-edge technology packed into the system. Unlike simpler systems that might rely on luck or rudimentary targeting, THAAD is a sophisticated setup composed of four key components. First is the launch vehicle which looks like a heavy-duty four-wheel drive truck straight out of a low-budget 1980s war movie. Each launch vehicle is equipped with launchers that hold up to eight interceptor missiles. Each THAAD battery comprises six launch vehicles, totaling 48 interceptors per battery. While the launch vehicle itself is fairly standard for mobile air defense, the real magic happens in its radar system. THAAD uses a high-frequency radar called the AN-TPY-2, capable of tracking missiles up to 3,000 kilometers away. This means there's virtually no location in Iran where a missile could be launched without being detected. The radar has two operational modes, forward-based mode and terminal mode. In forward-based mode, it tracks threats during their initial launch and ascent phases, monitoring the missile as it rises and begins its mid-course trajectory towards the target. Once the missile reaches its highest point, it turns toward its target, and begins its terminal phase. Depending on the missile, its trajectory might briefly take it into low Earth orbit before re-entering the atmosphere. This approach increases the missile's kinetic energy and speed, making it harder to intercept. Enter the terminal mode of the AN-TPY-2 radar, which excels during this critical final phase. The radar features around 25,000 individual antennas emitting high-frequency radiation in the X-band spectrum at 8 to 12 gigahertz. This allows the radar to transmit and receive vast amounts of data, up to 20 trillion waveform signals per second. The immense data flow is processed by a highly advanced fire control system. Each THAAD battery is equipped with two tactical operation stations to process this data. These stations manage interception fire control and are supported by a communications network that integrates the battery into a larger air defense framework. The system differentiates between civilian and military aircraft, drones and missiles, ensuring accurate targeting. When a threat is identified, operators can direct computers to develop fire control solutions, which are then loaded into the interceptors before they're launched. Each interceptor missile is a marvel of engineering standing 18 feet tall and weighing roughly 1,300 pounds. Most of this weight is rocket fuel, propelling the missile to speeds of up to Mach 8. As the interceptor approaches its target, it uses onboard radar to actively search for the threat and adjust its trajectory as needed. At this stage, THAAD's true power is revealed. Upon closing in on its target, the interceptor uses kinetic energy rather than an explosive warhead to obliterate the missile in mid-air. This hit-to-kill technology ensures maximum precision and minimizes collateral damage. The deployment of THAAD in Israel is a game-changer, signaling a major escalation in the region's defense strategy. It not only bolsters Israel's ability to counter Iranian threats, but also showcases the United States' commitment to its allies and its technological dominance in modern warfare. From a science fiction movie-like scenario, when the interceptor gets close to its target, it doesn't explode. Oh no. The interceptor's body doesn't detach from what's called the kill vehicle located in the nose cone of the missile. 
Once it's near enough to the threat, it literally separates and slams into the target, like John Cena coming out of nowhere, knocking it out of the sky with direct skin-to-skin -skin contact. So aside from how wildly effective this missile is at neutralizing threats, why does it matter to Israel? On October 1st, 2024, Iran made history once again. On that day, they launched nearly 180 ballistic missiles, while British and Jordanian planes, alongside two American destroyers, managed to intercept about 20 of these missiles before they entered Israeli airspace, the majority of them overwhelmed Israel's air defences. Even though Israel successfully intercepted many of the missiles, the October 1st attack was significantly more effective than their last major assault in April. Despite the fog of war, publicly available satellite images reveal at least 32 missile strikes on a major airbase housing F-35 aircraft, several strikes on another airbase, and an almost direct hit on a building believed to house high-ranking personnel, as well as several other military targets. From start to finish, these missiles took an average of about 12 minutes to reach Israeli airspace before engagement. But why was this assault so much more successful for Iran this time? A key factor was the shift to primarily using ballistic missiles. While the April attack was larger, involving roughly 300 projectiles overall, it included around 120 ballistic missiles, 30 cruise missiles, and the rest were armed drones. Due to the slower speed of drones compared to missiles, Israel had approximately eight hours of advanced warning before engaging with any threats. By switching to only fast-moving missiles, reportedly including the debut of the hypersonic FAT-2 missile, Israel was caught off guard. Another factor was Iran exploiting a critical weakness in the Israeli Defense Forces' IDF air defense network. While Israel has a deeply layered defense system with current technologies like the Iron Dome, David's Sling and the Arrow, there's one vulnerability. Thanks to systems like the Arrow, Israel can engage threats from over 2,000 kilometers away and at extremely high altitudes. However, the recent attack demonstrated that Israeli air defenses are vulnerable to high-diving ballistic missiles in their terminal phase. Although systems like THAAD, Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, have a medium range of 150 to 200 kilometers and can intercept targets at altitudes up to 150 kilometers, literally in outer space, this capability is a game changer in Israel's battle against Iran. Missiles like FAT-2 and Kahir Shekin utilize this high diving terminal phase, specifically designed to evade aerial searches. Radar systems that fill this critical gap by engaging targets in space now provide Israel with defenses against even the most advanced Iranian threats. But that's not the only support the US has offered Israel, which will likely make Iran think twice before launching another wide-scale attack. As of the making of this video, there are two full carrier strike groups and an amphibious readiness group sailing the waters of the eastern Mediterranean, Red Sea and Persian Gulf. Combined, these ships represent nearly 300,000 tons of readiness to deliver freedom at any time, anywhere. Iran's greatest concern, if they try another large-scale missile attack, might be the US Navy's cruisers and destroyers. All surface combatants are equipped with the highly advanced Aegis combat system, the most lethal combat system aboard any warship in the world. What makes these ships a formidable threat to Iran's plans to wipe Israel off the map is their spy radar. This radar, the backbone of Aegis combat capabilities, is an incredibly powerful phased array radar system that continuously scans for aerial contacts, including targets like FAT-2 missiles, though at a much slower intensity. Aegis is so effective because it generates highly precise data about incoming threats while on board a warship traveling at speeds of over 30 knots. This mobility significantly extends the radar's 200-kilometer range. Even more impressive, multiple Aegis-equipped ships can share data links, drastically enhancing their defensive capabilities. For instance, a ship in the Red Sea can detect incoming aerial threats from Iran across Jordan and pass this data to another ship in the Mediterranean. That second ship, which may not have picked up the threats with its own sensors, can engage them effectively once they enter Israeli airspace. However, surface ships aren't Iran's only nightmare. While these vessels help clear the skies above Israel, it's the aircraft carriers that truly make Iranian leaders nervous. 
The USS Harry S. Truman and USS Abraham Lincoln are currently operating in the region. Together, their presence represents a significant deterrent to any further aggressive moves by Iran. The aircraft carrier can carry approximately 140 aircraft, including more than 80 advanced fighter jets, such as the F-35 and F-18, 10 F-18 Growlers, 8 E-2D Hawkeyes, and tons of helicopters between these two carriers. This force is among the top 25% of the world's most powerful air forces today. These carriers represent only 20% of the current aircraft carrier fleet. Thanks to advanced aircraft like the F-35, these ships can conduct combat air patrols and reconnaissance missions far beyond the boundaries of the Mediterranean Sea or the Arabian Gulf, with an approximate range of 600 miles for F-35S and 300 miles for Hawkeye sensors. The Navy can establish an effective airscreen over Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Syria and Lebanon. If Iran were to launch a missile over any of these countries, the naval forces would not only detect it, but could also shoot it down. If Iran believes these forces might disappear due to an election year, it is gravely mistaken. In reality, current US defense spending ensures that the US-Israel partnership will endure for a very long time. The United States has continuously reassured Israel that it is committed to maintaining Israel's qualitative military edge over its adversaries in the Middle East. In practical terms, Israel has received more direct military aid than any other country, exceeding the combined total of the next ten nations on the list. This aid has only increased annually since the war in Gaza began in 2023. Since October 2023, the United States has provided over $117.9 billion in direct military aid to Israel. This figure doesn't even include weapons sales, totaling nearly 100 deals worth approximately $18 billion, which fell below the minimum reporting threshold for Congress. These deals include $4 billion worth of missiles for Israel's Iron Dome and David's Sling Air Defense Systems, $4.4 billion to replace military equipment supplied to Israel from U.S. stockpiles, a $3.5 billion secret fund allowing Israel to purchase through the Foreign Military Sales Program, and $1.2 billion for testing and implementing the Iron Beam laser system, which will replace the Iron Dome. Additionally, one billion dollars was allocated for more artillery and mortar shells. These funds add to an 8.7 billion dollar military aid package approved by Congress at the end of September 2024. However, despite all these weapons, the United States finds itself increasingly entangled in a full-scale war in the Middle East. While U.S. forces have always been stationed in the region, even after the U.S. withdrawal from Iraq and Afghanistan, the current period is the most dangerous time for American forces since the full-scale combat operations in Iraq and Syria. American military and Air Force personnel have been continuously targeted by Iranian drones and missiles, often launched by proxy forces. These attacks have not been without casualties, as evidenced by the infamous Tower 22 attack in January 2024, which killed or injured 50 U.S. service members. At sea, there have been numerous reports of American sailors aboard destroyers being fired upon and defending themselves. Every branch of the U.S. military has engaged in some capacity against Iran or its proxies over the past year. For this reason, the U.S. still requires additional financial support and finds itself teetering on the edge of a crisis it may not be able to recover from. With historic levels of lethal aid flowing into Israel's hands alongside Iran's continued brazenness in attacking U.S. forces, something is bound to happen soon. When it does, Iran will learn what it truly means to be afraid. Goodbye for now.